G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. We are here on Coastal Cliffs. Have a look at this bad boy. We have got ourselves a new map, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited. You better be excited as well because we are about to do it. Let's get to it. Spawning in in the north side of the map in the color purple, playing as the Byzantines, which is legally required when you're playing the Byzantines. We've got magic. And on the south side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Mullions, we've got cat. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a casted game. It is an absolute pleasure to have your company. Let's talk a little bit about this map. I guess we can probably get a, a bit of a split screen going here as well. Don't mind if we do. How you doing right there? Have a look at that. Looks like we've got two players that have jumped across each other with the scouts. I don't actually have a term for this one yet, but cat's on the side of magic and magic's on the side of cat. But I don't think either of the players know. Anyway. This map, let's take a little bit of a look at it. Down towards that bottom right-hand corner, you will see our mini-map. Uh, and uh, what's interesting about this map, let's uh, let's dive into it and, and, and take a look. So you've got this these fish out here, right? You might be thinking, oh, that looks awesome. I'm going to put a dock down. I'll get myself a couple of fish, some fishing boats. Everything's going to be good. And then you realize there is a huge cliff across the entirety of this map. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why? Why? And the answer is very simple. The idea is we're just reducing the space of play. Naturally, when you put two guys in a ring, they seem to punch they they seem to punch each other a little bit more when you make that ring smaller. So the smaller we make the ring, the better it is for the action, or at least that's the way the argument goes. Hopefully that's what we see here. Now, interesting thing to note, Cat is out very far on this map. I don't know if he's gonna make it home in time. I don't we can count how many sheep he's got. It looks like he's got three. So he needs to be back here. I mean, he's probably done the math though, right? So I'm not, I'm not going to doubt the man. But he's uh, he's got a pretty big loop going on out over here. Meanwhile, let's check in for Magic because Magic is coming back. He's got seven sheep. So not too bad. Both of these guys, pretty even Stevens though. I think Cat's definitely got the advantage because he's going to come along this edge of the map. And can I just remark on how beautiful this looks? The fact that you've got this huge cliff and all of these trees. It looks, it looks really, really nice. But I like the idea that it reduces the game space. The, the fact that you, you're you limited now in where you can go. But that's not the only thing it's done. So if we take a look at magic space, where is the stone? If we have a look at the stone, we don't see any stone. And that, that is an intentional design choice by the map designer. His name's Avery. Uh You would have seen him in Outback Octagon. He is a prolific map maker and one of the best in the business always making some really good maps and this of course is no uh no question one of his better ones uh but towards that north side that is where the stone outcropping is it's a much further away stone outcropping so that means you're not going to be seeing as easy second town centers through it means it's a bit of a nerf for civilizations like the ottomans uh but also a nerf for civilizations like the byzantines who do like to get out on the stone relatively early and uh, it makes it a bit harder to to get those those uh those early systems in so Magic obviously just going to be going for the one system to start with. Pretty decent coverage that he's got here. Manages to get the gold, gets the berries, gets the town center, and of course also gets the wood. Interesting decision that he went for the, the lumber camp here and not here, just to guarantee, because you can see a couple of these villagers. Oh, he's he's bringing them around. Look at this. As we're watching him, him on the villagers, he brings them around. Very, very cute. Uh, and definitely the right choice there. All right, well, age ups are coming through. We've got Magic with the Grand Winery, only two villages on it so far. On the other side of the map, Cat with the Mansa Quarry coming up now. A lot of villages on this pretty early age up, looking at about a 348 for him. Definitely not too bad. Uh, and uh, he's opened up with six houses around the pit mine. Let's see whether he works his way into a second pit mine. When it comes to gold on this map, you don't have big golds. You've got lots of little golds, uh, which is another thing that I, th I think is, is a good thing. Uh, when it comes to big golds, you know, it, for me as a Chinese main, uh, my first thought is, okay, I'm just going to put down, you know, the Great Wall Gatehouse on, on a big gold, and, th and then that gold is just mine for the rest of the game. Whereas that is not really an option here. I mean, it is an option. You can go and secure this, but it's only a single gold, not a double gold. So I do like that. A lot of wood being gathered up right now for Can. Have a look at this. We've got a party on the straggler tree. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of room there. We'll break some off. And we may potentially have some cows coming out for cats. So we'll be keeping an eye out on that. We do have a special UI toggle uh, for, for cows. Uh, cows specifically. And have a look at this. Warrior Scouts is back. It's been a while since we've seen it. And this is... 
one of those things where, you know, you wouldn't really be able to take advantage of this. Have a look. Hold on. Hold on a minute. we got Akratoi defenses coming through, but you wouldn't be able to really take advantage of Warrior Scouts uh, if it weren't for the fact that you're so damn far away from that town center. And Magic is working towards a second town center, and Cat really doesn't like that. Akratoi defenses, keep in mind, will not last forever. There is a, a not a cooldown on this, but a timer on this. It lasts for 30 seconds. And, uh, and Cat is being very annoying here. And this is only the first scout that's come out. We're going to see a second defensive scout here for Magic that comes out here looking to just try and keep things alive a little bit longer. Nice little defense. He wants to go after the villagers. It looks like he's going to be able to pull one of them back. And you can see he's so damn close. I just pulled the villas back at this point because it's, it's only a matter of time until you actually uh, get enough stone. Just because when you build buildings, uh, then it's going to increase that amount of stone that you've got. And have a look at this. We've got a villager... Oh, so, so damn tight. All right, let's check in on the other side of the map. It looks like we will have Cat now beginning to go for a mill, which, as you will know, it means only one thing. It means that we are going to have ourselves a little bit of cows coming through. So we're going to make sure that we track that. Just give me a second over here. I'm going to have to do that on my second computer. Just give me a second. If I click this button right here, and then I do this, then hopefully... We can track the cows. Hopefully, that's not too bad for you. I, I can't really see it because I've got my, my preview screen is quite small. Uh, but that will allow us to track how many cows are happening over here in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, so we'll be able to, to, to keep an eye out exactly how many there are. Look at this town center position. Oh my lord, I've just realized. Magic's got a beautiful TC spot here. The deer together with the uh, with the berries, with the stone. And this is what a great spot. Lament and I are now going to be coming out as well here. Uh, I, I'll be honest, I'm kind of impressed by the fact that magic managed to keep things alive over here he didn't lose a single villager as we can see on the ui uh things have gone well for magic this early on so far in, in this game like this is uh this is good this is really good the fact that no villagers were, were lost so far i think it's a little bit of a mistake from cat i don't think he exploited the ability of the marlians to really put on pressure to that that stone but i want to know what you guys think though do you like this map would you like to see this map a little bit more if, if the Age of Empires 4 developers adopted this map, would you be into it? I think it favors some civilizations and it definitely disadvantages some, as we've talked about, the Ottomans, the Byzantines, civilizations that you would naturally think probably not the best. But I think there's other civs that probably won't do that well. Civilizations like the Chinese, as an example. The Chinese love to get out there on that stone outcropping, but if they're much further away, it means it's going to be a lot less forgiving uh, when they do inevitably get caught with their pants down out there. So that's another thing to consider. But then there's civilizations that might be really, really good on this map, like the Malians, I think are really good here, just because they love playing one base. They really only need that gold. That's pretty much it. And then for the rest of it, they're all they're just happy campers. That cow count that cow count will continue to increase. Mining camp will stay alive for the moment, Lament and I, as it comes through. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious what you guys think. Because uh, I if I remember correctly. Uh, Avery entered this into a competition that I was a judge for for map making, and I, if I remember correctly, I rated it pretty highly. Uh, I, I, I do like this. I do like the design a lot. Archer's now going to be coming out here for Cat. A little bit of a defensive play, obviously aware that his opponent's starting to build up military here, and this is something you've always got to be really careful of. Playing against the Byzantines, they do have this feudal explosion, which. Which contract are we going to be going into? It looks like it's going to be Longbowman. Interesting choice to be going into Longbowman here, especially because you know you're up against the Javelin Throwers, but Longbows are, are interesting in that if you've got enough of them, you can just kill the Javelin Throwers. You don't really care. They're kind of like Jukadu in that regard, and they do have the extra range, which is also quite nice, but I find it interesting that Magic has gone for the ja or go gone for the Longbows despite knowing he's up against the Javelins. So that that is that I find very, very interesting. All right, well, checking in on the north side of the map, that village account is going to continue to rise here for Magic. Second TC has been up for quite a while. He's going to throw down the outpost up on this northern side as well. So looking to get really defensive here, and I'm, I'm loving it. The fact that he's got these two front wood lines just makes it so easy to defend because typically when you want to wall up the front, think about it, right? Like, okay, let's say we want to wall up this entire area. Now I have to wall from this point all the way across over to here. How much wood is that going to cost? That's a massive wall that I've now got to defend as well. You know, my opponent could hit me here, 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 anywhere along this wall. Whereas now, because of these two front wood lines, it means that this is my only weak point. And that just feels really good. Whenever you get a spawn like this, and compare that over to what Cat's got. Cat's is very similar in that he's got the, the, the front down here and this towards the top side, but it's going to be a little bit more of a longer wall. So always need to be very careful about... Uh, out going for those longer walls, even if they're close to our base. Third level of systems up now as well for Magic. 
The numbers continue to rise here for him. He's got that mercenary house pumping. Keep in mind, he does have the influence for both of these buildings currently set to Conscriptio, which is going to mean they are pumping very, very fast. Villager will not go down as it will actually retreat out from this top side here. Do see the outpost is looking to pick up some arrow slits. He's got to be careful as these villagers are under pressure. Archers looking to tee off towards the villagers. Not going to be able to find too much success there as the drop-off does occur. And Longbows together with the Lament Knight will be able to chase away the archers for now. Meanwhile, behind this, Cat is going to be thinking about going Castle Age. Definitely the right call. And I'm curious to see what kind of combo he's thinking about once he reaches Castle Age. Whether he goes here, he could just go into a whole bunch of javelin throwers. He could go into a whole bunch of veteran archers, I think might actually be a pretty smart move. Uh, so we'll have to see whether he, he looks to continue that trend. Meanwhile, the cow counter. What are we up to? We're up to 18 cows. So he is just about to reach that final that final cow. He's at 19 right now, 20th one. Actually, no, I take it back. That is, that's 20 out of 20. You know what that means if we're 20 out of 20? I'm just going to get rid of this little guy down here. I don't think we need it anymore. You know he's 20 out of 20, so we'll leave it there. It's been a slow and steady climb for him. It's interesting that we can't see that on the UI. Uh, we, we, we do have to bring that one in from uh, from the other PC, but age up now coming through 20 villagers on the Grand Fulani Corral. That is absolutely ludicrous. 11 minutes into this game, we will switch it over to income per minute just so we can see how much these cows are producing. And have a look at that with zero villagers on food. You're talking about more than 700 food a minute. That is insanity. That is absolute insanity. That's, it's crazy. Oh gosh, sorry. That was that was a little bit too uh, phlegmy for you. Apologies. It's crazy how, how much food that actually brings in. That's the, uh, the, that's the equivalent of like 16, 17 villages right there. Like each cow represents a, a villager almost. Especially when, once the Grand Fulani Corral comes through as well. 11 minutes on the age up. Magic now looking to put some pressure on towards the front. I'd love to see the Hyrule Safont coming out shortly. Let's check in with the Blacksmith and see whether he's going to opt for Siege Engineering. He's already picking up plus one on that ranged attack. I wouldn't be surprised if Siege Engineering is the next one through. All right, on the backside, we do have that scout coming through. He's looking to try and spot out exactly where his opponent is sitting with regard to infrastructure. Plenty of bills on gold. So he's going to be aware of a switch to potential see seeing sofa on the map. And that second stable is going to confirm it. Keep in mind, there was already the first one that has been scouted out. It's just we don't get to see it. And combined with things like imported armor, it is really going to start hurting. We see imported armor is in queue here, which is going to increase the armor of the sofa warrior by two. Now down towards this southern position, pressure is building. Magic looking to really turn up the heat. He's up 15 villagers at the moment, but keep in mind, not only do we have this passive gold coming through from Cat, we've also got the passive food coming through. Have a look at this. Three villagers on food. More than almost 1,100. More than 1,100 food a minute. That's insane. That is absolutely insane how good the Malian economy is on 1TC. I tell you what, this is a this is a civilization. That's for sure. We could say that much about it. This, this is a civilization. Let's compare the pair. What are we sitting at right now? So 1,600, 1,700, 2,500 for Cat. And then compared over to his opponent, you're talking about 2.3, 2.4K. So the economy is pretty even at this stage. Definitely will fall down here by quite a bit. Uh, I suspect Cat's going to be looking to pick up relics. We do see his Siege Workshop is out, but no Mosque, interestingly, has yet to put one down. So for Warrior, he's going to be looking to come out onto the middle of the map, pick up potential reinforcements here, but Magic is going to be going to the Castle Age. It's going to be the Golden Horn Tower that gets thrown down safely in the back of the base. The walls have come up completely on his side of the map. He is walled in 100%. It always feels wonderful when you've got these walls up like this. It just buys you so much time. This is something that I always mention whenever I'm coaching over on Patreon, which if you want to check out, I'll leave a link in the description. But one of the big things I talk about is just getting these walls up. It just buys you so much time because now all of a sudden you can react. I can say, I'm going to repair the wall. I'm going to move my military into position so that I can cover. Maybe I can pull more villages if I really need to make sure that this wall stays up and stays alive. And we can see right now that He's got to be careful with those villagers. One of them going to be struck there by the sofa where he needs to pull them back. May lose the first villager of the game. Indeed, he will. But the age up comes through. Wall still got plenty of health on it. Lament and I are here as well to accompany. And now the upgrades are on the way. Plus one ranged armor is going to be on the way. Also, he's picking up all the plus ones. We've also got elite or rather veterancy status for his uh, mercenaries together with the uh, veterancy for the Lament and I. We also see Manganelli placement on the way. Where is that outpost down here? So more targeted towards the front. On the other side of the map, though, it looks like Lumber Preservation is going to be coming in here for Cat. 
Mosk will finally get thrown down. He's, in fact, he's going for a double Mosk, which is definitely a smart call. Looking to prioritize picking up those relics. And now Magic only spots that Manganel at the last second. He's going to cop a huge hit to the back there. Hitting both Lament Knight and those Longbows. And this will definitely force him out and away from this position. Almost guaranteeing that Cat will get control of these relics. Now, speaking of relics, it's important to note the Grand Winery does have the ability to train Monks. We see the first one now going to be coming out looking to pick up this safe relic. Now, this was always going to be the... Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. He is going to look to contest in the center. I, I don't like his odds. That Manganel single-handedly just forces his opponent back. This Manganel... Ooh, the Manganel emplacement, though, is going to come into play. We'll get some decent shots off, and immediately Cat's going to have to fall back. But just remember, it's all about the relics. To me, that, that's the big thing right here. So as long as he's camping up these relics, he should be able to pick them all up within the next 60 seconds. So we'll keep an eye out on that. We'll keep an eye on the timer. Don't you go anywhere, Cat. Okay, never mind. He picks up the relic. Magic scouts it. Magic sees it. But unfortunately, Magic doesn't spot it until just now. And now he'll be able to head back and pick up that only relic that he's got. He technically made a second Monk back here as well, and that's got to feel bad, but Manganel firing off. Archers, have they picked up their Poison Arrow? It does look like they've got them. A little bit more damage coming through here, and Cat, the military numbers aren't the highest at this point, but the Manganel is going to be his saving grace. On the other side of the map, the Springled will be coming out. This Siege Workshop is built within the influence of the system, which means he's going to be buffing up the military production speed of this Springled by a huge amount. 70 seconds, or so, rather 17 seconds it's going to take to train that Springled compared to his opponent, who's going to wait 30 seconds for each of his. So almost double the, um, the time that he's going to have to wait there. So this Manganel has done well so far. The last relic. I'm, I'm, where is... Why are we going for this relic over here? We should be focusing this one in the middle. We are, are eventually going to get it. And that, that should give us four out of the five relics, which will definitely feel great uh, for Cat as he begins to transition into the mid game. A lot of sofa warriors here. Look to get caught off guard as Lament and I do a little bit of damage here. It looks like the, uh, the teardrop shields have come through. Actually, have they not come through? 1.25 movement speed. I don't think they have come through. No, they haven't. Teardrop shields not coming through. They just look... Why do they look like they've got teardrop shields? Maybe... Maybe I'm, I'm just special. Maybe maybe that's it. Anyway. Manganel now going to be coming out for magic as well. And look at the military numbers here. Really, really nice. A little bit of a comparison on the economies as well. Looks like we're sitting at about 23... 30... 3200, 3300. Somewhere around that region for Cat on the other side. You're going to be looking at... That's a pretty whopping economy that is going on right there. 2,800, 3,500, 3,700, 30, 38, 3,900 for Magic. So pretty close, pretty even Stevens, but a, a fair bit of that is going to be village account as well, which means that Cat has got a little bit more population space to play with. So the longer that this goes, the more uh, the more that these two players stand off, I think the better it gets for Cat. That's on the condition that Magic doesn't go to Imperial. Because remember, once you do hit 200 population, you've really got nowhere else to go but Imperial Age. And that's the most common thing that we see. We do see players just looking for that build-up just to make sure that they're safe. Because remember, if I go Imperial and my opponent's been making units, then all of a sudden I'm spending, what, 3,600 resources on aging up versus units. Whereas if I'm maxed, if I'm 200 out of 200, I can't really make a bigger army. Uh, but uh, now we do see the weakness of these walls. And it's going to be around this timing. But have a look at the damage that the outpost is putting out with that Mango in placement. Third shot comes in. And Cat's just going to fall back because his opponent is beginning to push down the middle. He's going for the throat. Archer's going to spot it. And he says, you know what? I don't want to lose this game just yet. I'll send a couple sofa in. I'll let them be the, uh, I'll let them be the bait. He's got to be so careful with these Manganels. Archers will move forward, but you can see just how powerful those Lament Knight are. Mangos turn around. Lament Knight number's still looking pretty decent. Mango shot, we heard it, but I didn't see it. Meanwhile, towards that top side, it looks like a little bit of a raid's coming through. I'd love to do split screen for you, but I'll be honest, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing the best. Okay, I think, I think I've got a little bit of split screen that I can maybe give you guys. How, how about this? There we go. We can watch the armies and the raid at the same time. Ideally, I'd, I'd like to have it the other way because now down towards that bottom side, Mango's getting good shots off. Only a single Springwood coming out here could potentially be dealt with uh, with uh, just using villagers here, Mango's. Moving forward. Going to have a little bit of a think about it. Firing off towards the Lament and I Mass Ledge Connect mixed in as well. We'll bring in that cinematic mode as Mango's firing off on both sides now. Springwood will go down and the advantage now sits with Cat. He's got the double Mango and the Springwood, which is definitely sound... It sounds like a, a plan for a warm summer's day when you got that many mangoes. Look at the big shot. Oh my lord, that mango shot from downtown. Did you see what happened there? Basically, let me explain it. Well, maybe I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time and neither does 
<laughs> Neither does the Pisa teams right now. Have a look at this. He looks like he's getting caught out of position. There's plenty of Sophie here if he wants to come up the rear. He should be looking to come up here and try and bait some of these Lament and I forward, but he's not really looking for it at the moment. Let's bring back that UI in, get a bit of an idea on where these guys currently sit as both Sacred Saints are taken. Magic currently holds them, and the push is starting to come to shove. Meanwhile, Magic, he's got plenty of resources in the bank when it comes to gold, but still needs to work on that food. Only 400 food a minute sitting in there compared to Cat, his opponent, who's got, probably got about one villager on food. There you go, zero villagers on food. Still th still, <laughs> still sitting at a thousand food a minute. It's just Marley and things, baby, just Marley and things. You know, don't mind me. I got plenty of plenty of food. I don't, I don't need to worry about... I don't need to worry about farms. What are farms? But, uh... The Byzantines will tell you what farms are. Well, they'll probably tell you what olive groves are because that's that's the technical term for them. Uh, but uh, they are starting to come up slowly in the back of the base for the Byzantine player. The numbers continuing to build in the middle. Military advantage definitely sitting with Cat at this stage of the game. Magic a little bit down, but keep in mind, he is close to that 200 population. And when you get to 200 population, you really don't have anywhere else to move but Imperial Age. So he could be looking for things like elite upgrades there. More importantly, roller shutter triggers. Roller shutter triggers the most important Imperial upgrade there is in the game. Whether you like it or not, that's just the way it goes. But speaking of Imperial Age, have a look at this timing. Cat says, you know what? I've had so many villagers on food lately. Eight. Uh, I think we're ready for an Imperial Age timing, but it could be worse. It could be worse. It could be really bad. Springles on the back. Mean. Oh, look at the Springled number out actually for his opponent. There's a lot of Springles here. I think he, I think he could have gotten away with that age up. He just needed to press the issue. But with Imperial Age coming, you really want to avoid fighting. Springles now going to move forward. One of the mangoes did go down. Second mango is still alive. He's going to keep it alive. In fact, with only a handful of uh, only a handful of health, but it looks like it does go down in the end. I think the Longbows must have picked it off. Meanwhile, it's a little bit hard to see the fight just because of all the trees that are involved here. Lanch connect together with Lament Knight on the front, and the numbers are looking pretty decent here on the defense for the Marlians. He's going to push forward, cancels. the age up again and then moves it forward. Once again, I think that was the right call. I don't think he needed to cancel it the first time. Um, so doing the right thing here, he does need to be careful of Siege, though. A Mangonel that comes roaming in could look to turn the tide of battle. Needs to bring more villagers towards this. Definitely don't be as, uh, as complacent as just leaving these villagers next to it on gold. You want to try and get everybody over here. Once this landmark comes online, you're going to be feeling very good about yourself. Have a look at the numbers, though. Village account will start to fall here. He's lost 10 so far already in this fight. The number's going to continue to climb. Actually, I take it back. It's, it's five that he's lost so far in this fight. I was looking at the wrong number, but it will climb. Six now taken out. Once this fort of the Huntress comes up, it's going to be very difficult to lose the middle. The keep, together with the fort of the Huntress, locks down this gold vein, but... It, oh, no, Magadale in placements! Oh! <gasps> No, 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 no. He's, he's, he's not paying attention. He's not paying attention. Okay, there we go. There we go. Only loses about, what, six villagers there. Ah! Oh, my Lord, dude. They really don't mess around those Manganel placements, do they? That is kind of wild watching them go in slow-mo across the battlefield. I, I reckon if you had a unit fast enough, you could probably send a man... Like, let's get a Khan out here. Let's get a Horseman. Let's get a whole bunch of, like, movement speed buffs, some Yam Network. Let's test how far can this outpost actually fire? Because I reckon it could be ludicrous. Anyway. Fort of the Huntress is, is up. Imperial Age is through. We're neutralizing sacred objectives, but this time it's on the side of Cat that is going to be able to hold those two down. Elite upgrades are on the way. We see elite archers. We see elite sofa. And most importantly, we see crosscut saw. But more importantly, we also see roller shutter triggers. Going to give that extra little bit of range over to our Malian siege. Very, very important. Now, there was a, quite a few villages that were lost in that fight. Now, normally I wouldn't be upset about that, but... Every villager for the Malian counts. And that is because he's on one TC. If he was on if he was on two TCs, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But the fact that he's on one TC, it is a big deal, in my opinion. And that's because it's going to take him a while to actually catch up to where he should be. Stonewall's now going to come up. The numbers are looking pretty decent for Cat here. But have a look at the Lament Knight. They are building. He's got 41 of them out. Six in queue. Age up comes in. It's going to be the Palatine School. So just to give everybody a refresher, the Palatine School is going to give you uh, replacements, not replacements, but enhancements to your army in the form of more units and not just any units. It's going to be those unique units, just like Unique New York. You, we've got unique units. So extra Varangian Guards, extra uh, Lament and I, extra Hyrusa Fonts, and extra Manganel Shots. Not really, uh, but it will give you extra Hyrusa Fonts, which almost rhymes with Manganel Shots. Elite upgrades on these archers is looking good. Firing off, doing plenty of damage, but the shield wall is preventing a fair bit of it from coming through. Lament and I continuing 
to retreat away from this front line. Do we see? Is that a university? It is indeed a university. It is online. Can I just remark again, once again, how beautiful the Byzantine buildings are? Are they not the most beautiful buildings in the game? Like, by far. Without a shadow of a doubt, they are the nicest buildings in the game. Except for, like, maybe the Koreans, when they get added, I reckon they'll have the best buildings. Who, who would have the nicest buildings? I feel like the Koreans. Can we... Is, is it too early to start talking about the next civilizations? What's it going to be? J judging by the previous patch, it's going to be like Koreans and Antarctica. Whoa, big mango shot coming in on the front line. Looking to try and hold it out a little bit longer. Roller shutter triggers his throw, but doesn't look like Magic's going to be looking to challenge any of this siege with anything other than units. And Lament and I demonstrating why they are one of the strongest units in the game. Still no elite upgrades just yet. Big shots from the mango. Still fighting out veteran units here. Not really a fan of all of these sofa warriors coming down on the south, but the Manganel still holding strong. Will go down here. He's fighting veteran units up against the castle age, but keep in mind the economy advantage advantage is significantly in favor of magic at this stage of the game. The elite upgrades, not really going to mean too much when you're pumping out this many units. And can we just talk about the economy here for a second? What kind of numbers have we got? We got 3.5k, 4.1k, 4.6k. Wow. 5.5k coming through for magic. On the other side though, you're looking at about 3.6, 4.4, 4.6. Pretty even, 4.6 versus 5.5, but still in favor of the Byzantines. And that is largely going to be because of those lost villages that Cat did unfortunately lose. Now, one thing to talk about is the distinct lack of gold currently in control by magic. Magic does not have access to a lot of gold. In fact, he's only got this gold under his control. The gold towards the north has been locked down by this stone wall. The keep controls this central gold. We also see the fort of the Huntress, which is going to lead leave quite a bit of, uh, of, of further control in. So realistically, there's not a lot of gold left on this map that you could really take as, a, as the Byzantine player. Further to that, your opponent is now starting to trade, which of course you don't know about because, well, you, you unlike Drongo, uh, can't see the entirety of the map. Numbers are, are starting to look good. Still no elite. Can, can we get elite upgrades through magic? It has been so damn long. Outpost's going to get an upgrade. Finally, the elite status comes through for the Lament Knight. On the backside, veteran Longo still not coming in. I, I, I'm going to need to sit magic down and talk to him about this. What do we do when we age up, guys? We upgrade our units. Lament Knight together on the front with the Varangian Guards. They've got their elite upgrades through. So for Warriors looking to come around onto the back, have got their elite upgrades. Everyone's elite upgraded except for you, Longbows. They're the only ones we're waiting on. And have a look at this. The Varangian Guard just moving through. And we're starting to see one of the weaknesses of the Marlians. Now, keep in mind, the Marlians do get access to Poison Arrows. This beautiful technology here. However, they do not get access to Incendiary Arrows, which is this bad boy right here, which gives them a little bit of extra damage and gives them a little bit of extra pizzazz. A little bit of extra flair, you could say. Um, and because of that, so if, if we were to actually do the math on a fully upgraded archer for the Marlians versus a fully upgraded archer for everybody else, if I remember correctly, the Marlians falls qu quite a bit short. So if we have a look here, so you're, you're, you're doing 8 plus 4 damage. So if we math that out, we could still get an extra, we could go 8 plus 5. Uh, there, there's another upgrade that you can get at the archery range, which I think he's picked up. Um, so 8, 8 plus 5 is his limit. Uh, and if we compare that, like, to the longbows, which is obviously going to be miles ahead just because they're longbows, uh, but they, they don't have incendiary arrows yet, which is going to be at least another two damage, maybe another three, depending on whether he looks to pick up plus three. But Mango Shot comes in. It's going to be two on the back line here. Cannon Emplacement also going to be helping out a little bit. He's got the upgrade on the Toll Outpost, and that's a lot of AoE damage, but the Byzantines don't care. Have a look at this. Varangian Guards now starting to move forward. They're going to pop the Berserk, and they're going to begin to try and... F oh, my Lord. Wait, why is my game in, in, like, windowed mode or something? What the heck? Hold on. I'm, I'm gonna... Okay, I fixed it up, but... Excuse me? Game, you should not be going into windowed mode. Uh, how did that even... Oh, God, everything is, like, going to shit right now. I, I apologize. Trying my best to keep it together here. Cat now gonna look to put down a keep on this central stone. I don't like your chances, Cat. I'm gonna be honest. This keep is gonna be coming up short. That is for sure. Lord Dow will be smiling upon it. And now you're starting to see the true power of the Byzantines. Have a look at the amount of production we've got in here. 32 Lamentini on the field, 32 in production. 20 Varangian Guard on the field, 11 in production. Further, further keep going to be thrown down. I'll be honest, I don't think this one's going to get up either. There is way too many units here, way too much tempo. Not to mention the fact we have got the Palatine School, which can't even make any more units because he's fully maxed. He can't even get value out of it. Pumping out units towards his opponent's base. So many resources now coming through. Who needs gold? Definitely not 
magic, that is for sure. He is just pumping trash at this stage, only using veteran longbows. Still, by the way, elite Lament and I, together with the elite Varangian guards, popping their berserking. The, the keep did get up, I will say that, but he's lost a lot of villagers. 44 workers down this game. You can see their, their carcasses, their bodies. Their, probably not carcasses, Drongo. They're, they're not animals. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can see them laying on the ground. Longbow's now going to be looking to break through. But I I'm going to be honest. This is impressive. This is scary. The Byzantine economy is, in my opinion, one of the most scary things in the game. And now a town center by Cat at the 30-minute mark. Cat, I'm just going to be honest. This is probably about 15 minutes late. At this stage of the game, we should both be on 130 villages. And the Marlians should be laughing as they've got their free food and their free gold that's trickling into them. And they're just having a great time. But unfortunately... A little bit too many villager losses in the mid game, not enough on the, the second town center. And it just means that we start to fall behind. And Magic's managed to hold, didn't cop a lot of damage. We, we did see those walls towards the north get crushed. Um, but fortunately, he was able to hold on. And now his economy is going into absolute overdrive. If we take a look inside the base of Magic right now, he has got 74 olive groves. Quite literally, in more villagers are on olive groves than his opponent has. Look at this. 74 villagers on food, on olive groves. And remember that with those olive groves, he's getting a huge amount of olive oil. In fact, he's got so much olive oil, he needs to start putting down more mercenary houses. He can't, he's not, he can't even afford the elite contract. All right, well, slowly and steadily, problems are beginning to build here for Cat. Now, keep in mind, this is an EGC TV game. The elite classic. So... Players aren't going to be giving up as easy. And we can... Normally when the cows are under pressure, the Marlians realize, you know what? It's, it's, it's going to be... It's going to be GG's right there. But it's not going to happen here. And the reason why is because this is a tournament game. So I'm going to encourage you right now, make sure this weekend you go check out EGC TV. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can watch them live. I want you to go check them out though because I, I suspect we're going to see Cat and we're going to see Magic and we're going to see some damn well good games. So I want you to be here, all right? Make sure you come say good day. Anyway, towards that top side... We start to see the pressure being put on for Cat at this second keep. Sacred Site has been neutralized, which means there is no longer a threat for that Sacred Victory. On the south side, Varangian Guards looking to siege down these markets. It's a slow and steady trickle of gold. Another thing to note, though, is we don't even have any siege in here taking out this keep. I think maybe there's a trebuchet, a single trebuchet on the back. Not going to be doing a whole lot of work. 83 Lamet Knight in queue. This unit is just absolutely busted. Uh, uh, this is why they nerf, they're they nerfing the Lamet Knight. Can we just talk about this unit? Like, this is why it's getting nerfed. Th this, it has such perfect synergy with this civilization. Let's just talk about it for a second. Not only are uh, the costs for the Lamet Knight just amazing, right? 80 food, 10, 10 wood. That's it, just 10 wood. A tiny little bit of wood. Just one tree will give you 15 Lamet Knight. He's only making Lament Knight. Look, look at this. There was a single Varangian guard in queue. 77 Lament Knight. The economy is absolutely ham. Pumping non-stop towards the middle. At this point, look at the Palatine School. The Palatine School has got so many units queued up. It can't get more units out. All of these units are free and it can't even get them out. He can't make any more units because he's just got that much spam that's going on. The production is absolutely ludicrous at this point. Look at the queue that he's got on each of these Raxes. And this is the point where you've got to assess yourself as a Byzantine player and say, maybe I should make more production. Maybe I should get more barracks out here. Maybe that could be a good idea. Lament and I are now going to be coming around the back. And this is one of those things that's so scary because how do you beat infinite units? Like if, if I said to you, all right, I'm going to make infinite units. What, what do you use to beat that? Because you can beat infinity. You want to know what the truth is? It's like a mangonel. That's, that's, that's the way that you do it. You have to beat it with area of effect. You can't do it any other way. Because ideally what you'd look to do is control the edges with things like stone walls. So you'd look to get a stone wall down across here. And then try and focus your opponent towards one area with mangonels. And mangonels would be the way that you would do it. But it's a difficult spot for Cat because he's behind on the economic side of things. Down towards the south. Bombard. We do hear it slowly but steadily coming out. Where is it? I, I hear it. There it is. Towards that top side. I can hear it. My, my hearing's not the best. I'll say that much. I, I, I know it's out here, though. And look at this. More flooding. Just continuing. It just... They, they don't stop. They just don't stop. The, the, you know, the Zerg have officially come to Age of Empires 4. And it's called the Lament Knight. I, I, as I said that, I clicked on a Varangian guard. He's got five of them out still somewhere. They just... Is this, is this them here? There's three of them here. 
No, I've got four of them here. Four Varangian Guard and uh, 68 Lamentini. Uh, at this, I mean, when you got 85 Lamentini queued up, is that where you just start deleting villages? I feel like it probably is. Like, look at this, rallying towards the top, now throwing down a keep on the gold. He hasn't had gold this entire game, but now he's like, oh, maybe we could get the gold. You know, m maybe we could make it work. Still funneling units in. It's a conga line of Lamet and I across the map, and Cat still holding on for dear life. Cat was looking so damn good in the mid game, but unfortunately, things are starting to fall apart. Well, I say starting to fall apart. That, at, at this point in time, like the front has fallen off. We, we're getting towed outside the environment. Things are not going well for us. Uh, that's that's another Australian reference. Um, Google, just just Google it. The front's fallen off. You'll you'll enjoy it. You'll love it. If you haven't seen it before, you're about to. You're about to witness something beautiful. Uh, anyway, Archer numbers still looking decent. He still yet to pick up that plus three range attack. Indeed he is. Well, Lolo comes in looking to try and hold against the, the horde of Lament and I. Not going to happen. They're too damn fast. Look at that. Too damn fast. 1.44 movement speed. They're running around almost as fast as cataphracts. I'm not even kidding you. Who needs cataphracts when you've got Lament and I? The Zerg continues as more units rally towards the front. He is pumping non-stop. And the production numbers have not really increased. Oh, there we go. There we go. Mercenary House is now being thrown down here. Finally picking up the elite contract to 7,000 olive oil in the bank, by the way. Jeez, Louise. This civilization. This civilization. Can we just talk for a second about this damn civilization? And th this sim is getting buffed, by the way. Yeah. Watch out. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. It's not going to be a fun time if you're up against a Byzantine late game like this. This civilization is just on an absolute other level. And I think right here, Kat has realized that he has gone up against an incredibly competent Byzantine player. Fellas, go check out EGC TV. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can watch them live over on Twitch this weekend. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And geez, Louise, man, we got to talk about the Byzantines. That is absolutely wild.